Hey guys, um, today we're looking at elimination. <coughs> this is one method um, to solve a system of equations. Um, it's a little bit different. We did substitution the other day um, where you substitute something in for something else um, to solve this. Whereas elimination, we're trying to get rid of one of our variables first and then we'll finish it up the exact same way as substitution where we substitute our x or our y back in um, to get our other variable. Okay, so for this one, the goal of this is to get it to where we have the same number but opposite signs for one of our variables. Doesn't matter if it's your x or your y, um, but you need to make sure that you have the same number and opposite signs for this to work. Okay, to make this happen, we use multiplication. So in this problem, if I'm looking at these x's and y's, I'm trying to determine which one is going to be easier, the x's or the y's, um, to multiply a number times one or both equations to make it so we have the same numbers but opposite signs. So what that looks like in this problem. Um, right now, the x's, um, this one's pretty, pretty straightforward. We have one x here, we have two x's here. I could multiply this times a negative two so that we end up having a negative two here and a two here. That would be pretty easy. Um, I want to double check though to make sure that there's not something I'm missing. Maybe I don't even have to multiply. So I'm going to look over at the y's. Here I have a four and a five. They're not the same number. They're not opposite signs. In this case, I would have to find or multiply both of these to get me to where I have a y with the same number opposite sign. So this one, the easier problem would be my x's to get rid of, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to multiply this entire top problem times a negative two. Again, the reason I'm doing this is to make it so my variable here, x, has the same number, two, but opposite signs. Negative two here, positive two down here, okay? So I'll rewrite the whole problem down below the top part now, I'm distributing or multiplying the negative 2 to everything. So negative 2 times x gets me negative 2x. Negative 2 times 4 gets me negative 8y. Negative 2 times the 2 on the other side of our equal sign gets me negative 4. Okay. This second problem, I didn't do anything to. So I'm just going to rewrite that or bring that down. So I get 2x plus 5y equals negative 2. Here when I do this problem, negative 2 plus 2, these will cancel out or get us a 0. That's the whole reason why it's called elimination, is we're eliminating one of our variables. So we've now eliminated our x, we can continue solving for our y. So I have negative eight plus our five gets me negative three y. Here, negative four plus negative two gets me negative six. We can divide both of these by our negative three, so I get y equals two. Just like in substitution, we now have half of our answer. I have two is my y value. Now I need to plug this back in to either problem to solve for my x. Um, for this one, I'm gonna probably plug it into the first one. Again, doesn't matter which one you do this for, it should get you the correct answer. So as I go for this one, I'm gonna go solve it over here. Um, I'm gonna plug it back in, so I'm gonna do this top one here. I have the y value, so I'll have, gotta put a barrier here, x plus four, my y value now is two, times two equals two. The four times two is eight, I'm gonna solve by subtracting eight from both sides, so I would end up with x equals negative six. So my answer is negative six comma two, okay? Again, this is for elimination. Um, things to watch out for. Um, occasionally here, um, we start trying to make this a subtraction sign. It'll always be a plus here. So you're always thinking negative eight plus our five or negative four plus our negative two. Every single time that's gonna be a plus. Um, the other thing, just like in our substitution, occasionally when you do this, all of your variables will cancel out. So here, if I did this, let's say this was a positive eight, then both our y's and our x's would cancel out, I would have zero equals negative six. If it's true, it's infinite solutions. If I had zero equals negative six, that's not true, zero doesn't equal negative six, so there'd be no solution, okay? I'm gonna do one more where it's not set up as nice where the x's are right over top of the y's, um, and then that should be everything we need for this, okay? So for elimination, one more problem here. Um, I have 4x equals 3y plus 10. My second problem is 3x plus 5y equals negative 7. Okay? So now at first glance, this looks just like the last one. We're like, hey, we've got x's, we've got y's, we've got numbers. Okay? The issue here is I do not have my e equal signs lined up. I need it to be where we have the same stuff on the left side as we have on the right side. Okay? So I need to move or do some moving things around so that I have, for this one, I'm gonna make it so I have both my x and my y on the left side. 
Okay, so that means in the top problem, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of side work. So I'm gonna put this over here on the left side. So I'm gonna have 4x equals 3y plus 10. Again, I'm gonna get it so I have both x's and y's on the left side of my problem. So here, I'm gonna subtract 3y minus 3y. 4x minus 3y equals 10. Okay, this is very important. If you don't do this step, this causes some big issues. It's automatically gonna be wrong as we move forward. Okay, so now I have my new problem. I'm gonna rewrite this. So I'll have 4x minus 3y equals 10. That was my top problem. The bottom problem is still 3x plus 5y equals negative seven. Okay, from here, again, our goal is to get it so we have the same number, but our opposite signs in front of one of my variables. Okay, and we do that by using multiplication. When I look at this problem here, um, you can choose either x's or y's. Um, for this one, some students are gonna choose the y, and I, I agree with that. One is positive, one is negative, okay? If I have a three and a five, the number that they both would go to would be 15. So I need to get it so both of them go to a 15, okay? They're already the opposite signs, so I don't need to change what I'm multiplying by. I don't need to put a negative out here. So here I'll do times five. On the bottom to get a five to a 15, I need to do times three. Okay. You could do this with four and three to get your x's. You just have to do it times three times four and make one of them negative. Okay. So for this, I'm gonna multiply everything out. So the top part, five times four gets me 20x. Five times negative three is negative 15y. Five times 10 gets me 50. Three times three is nine x. Three times five is positive 15. Three times our negative seven over here is negative 35. Okay. So, as I go through this, I'm gonna multiply this out, solve. Now I'm gonna go straight, again with my addition, straight down, okay? So here I'm gonna have 20 plus nine X gets me 29 X. In the middle, these will cancel out. Here, if I do my 50 minus my 35, I'm going to get 15. This one's gonna get us a little bit of a goofy number here, but we'll still stick with it, okay? Um, so here I have 29x equals 15. I'm going to divide both sides by 29. So I get x equals 15 over 29. Okay, not all of our numbers are going to be nice and pretty. This one's kind of ugly, but we're going to stick with it, okay? So again, for my answer, I have my x value now is 15 over 29. Now I'm going to plug this back in. Again, your choice on where you want to plug it in. Um, for this one, let's just say we plug it in the top again this kind of barrier again here. So I'm going to plug this in. We have 4 times my 15 over 29 equals 3y plus 10. Okay, so 4 times, I'm going to use my calculator for this one, 4 times my 15 divided by 29 gets me 2 and 2, and two 29ths. Okay, to get my y by itself, I'm gonna subtract 10 from both sides, so I'll do subtracting 10 here, which gives me negative seven and 27 over 29 equals three y. I'll divide then by three on both sides, and that will get us a negative two and 56 over 87. Like I said, it's not super pretty here. Um, but again, not all of our numbers in life are gonna be perfect, okay? Um, for our tests and for our quizzes, it's not gonna come out as these big ugly fractions, um, but in general, this is the process to solve. You should get an X, you should get a Y, unless you get a no solution or infinite solution where your variables dropped out at the beginning, okay? Again, hopefully this helps. This is elimination again, so solving systems using elimination. All right, have a good one, guys.